center, both centers, being, being, you'll notice I don't have a chuck in here, it was a question of choice. Now, now that you have, you, you, you've marked your centers, uh, you go to the, uh, you go to the drill press, and you make a hole, three-eighths of an inch, approximately two inches deep. The rules are, you're going to get a different sound if you go deeper or not, uh, yeah. so try it. Once the hole is done, make sure it is centered. You've got to mark uh, your piece at five-eighths from one end. We're all, the one end is always the end that's going to be on the headstock, and that's going to be the whistle part. Okay. So I mark five eighths of an inch, and five eighths on both, on one side, actually I only need one side. I'm going to go to the bandsaw. Now, I want to cut half of the width of the, of the piece of wood. Mine is an inch, so I'll go half an inch deep. I've cut my my half inch deep slot. Half inch deep, and another cut that is at thirty degrees to me to re reach the the center, at the end of my half inch deep. Now to hold a piece of wood. You could use a Jacob chuck, which I prefer because I had it, because I put in it a small pin, a metal pin, three-eighths of an inch. Oops. And I can hold my whistle in there, and I'm ready to turn. Or, if you don't have a Jacob chuck, you can make one. Make a chuck that you will hold in your chuck, and I'll leave a dowel, a 3 8 of an inch dowel, not more than 2 inches, let's say an inch and a half. Now, why I prefer this? Because after a while, uh, the wood uh, gets softer and you're not necessarily well aligned. Well, th with this, I know I'm always centered. Okay, so we'll start off by turning this piece of wood to, down to 7 eighths of an inch. It's the Bedan, I uh, use it a lot, uh, very handy. And there again, the 7 8 is a softness. It could be, uh, it could be more, it could be less. And so it's for uh,
Depending on the amount of, of patterns I want, I'll mark different lines. Right. This whistle has only three beads, this one has four. So I'll go according to what I want. And since it's something that is easy to make, um, I decided to do a, a template because you can go to an outing and do a whistle. Uh, you'll be doing whistle all day, you're going to turn uh, 50 whistles. So instead of measuring uh, all, all the time, you just take uh, your template. Did you find it? Yes. <laughs> Good. I have a mark at an inch and a half for my three quarter at the end, and I've got four lines because I'll have four beats on on this one. And I say four beats, gonna be three beats. This mouthpiece. I'll reduce to five eighths of an inch. And again, it is approximate. If you want it bigger, go for bigger. If you want it smaller, you can't really go much smaller because of the, uh, the hole. But, uh, since it's, uh, I'm using maple, which is a hard wood, I can bring it down to next to nothing and it's going to hold.
You remember that uh, my whistle was colored because it's more attractive for kids. And I'm coloring with the uh, felt pens, but I don't want the colors to mix from one bead to another. So, in order to avoid that, I'll burn a line. So that way, when I apply color to one bead, it doesn't transfer to the other. And it's nice uh, one here. And it could be nice uh, one here. The, the inside of the cuts uh, that I did on the bandsaw are rough. You could take some sandpaper, a file or whatever to clean it up to make it uh, nicer. Now what makes the sound in there is going to be the way air penetrates in the tube. So you got to block most of the opening of the 3 8 opening here with a dowel. But if you put a dowel, <laughs> nothing's going to happen. Uh, so you have to remove some wood from the dowel. You remove, on a 3 8 dowel, you removed an eighth of an inch of the wood. So that dowel that you want is going to stop exactly at that line. 
but don't cut it five eighths because if you cut it five eighths long, you won't be able to to rotate it. to rotate it inside. So cut it an inch long, and you want the dowel to go in line with the cut. You don't want it to go into the whistle. Just it has to stop at the mouthpiece. And the flat part is on top. So you see the flat part is here. It goes on top of the whistle. I would be tempted to say try it before you glue it, but uh, it's going to go in. Whoops. That's a lot of glue for a little piece. I slide it in. Make sure it's sitting in the right place. And we'll let it dry for a few seconds. We'll just put pressure on it. One thing I forgot to mention is uh, before you glue the, uh, the dowel in there, make sure you clean the inside of the whistle. Because mm. if there's dust in there. That little piece is called a thipple. A thipple? Thipple. That the pull is on. Oh, yeah. I usually, you usually get four bucks from the barrels. Now, <laughs> you you go again to your uh, to your bands or whatever or sanding disc because you want to cut the excess of the dowel. You don't need that. And you want to make a shape like this at the bottom. And you could even remove some wood on top. So if you had a sanding disc on, mounted on your lathe or sanding disc apart, you had a sanding disc, you sand the dowel down, you sand this part, and you remove a little bit of wood. You remove this wood. Now what I use is a little sanding disc. Okay, so that's it for the bottom part. Now I'll do the bottom where I want to move, remove more wood. Why I like this cylinder more than a, a sanding disc is because it gives me a, a, a rounded shape and a lot of dust. Finishing, you could use a, uh, anything that is not uh, toxic. Uh, I use wax. Uh, you could uh, finish it on the veal system. And that's it.